Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. That's a good question, Will. So, I don't know. I just, it's just being me. So, I guess I always try to do what I thought is the right way to do it. And it allowed me to build up a small company and have my living. But avoiding the tech giants, yes, it's... Uh, it's, it was always on my my plan to do so. So in the early days during university, I had a an internship at a large tech company, and this uh, was so bad experience that I decided to never go there. Predictions for the kernel? Oh, I don't know. This is hard. I mean, it's all going to go towards more accelerators, towards more virtualization, towards more performance, and whatever. It's but the 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 use cases are getting broader. So it's it's not only the the, the enterprise stuff getting more attention. It's uh, all over the place and uh, there's a lot of overlap in the in the application space. So people have to, to work closer together to solve these problems. So the big tickets, big bits of the RT patch set. Oh, it's so print K is still outstanding. Um, so uh, the first portion of it just went into uh, RC one uh, five ten RC one. That's the uh, the ring buffer rewrite, which took a while because it affects uh, tooling uh, like crash kernel analysis and th and stuff like that and they packed it with some other changes they wanted to do the for the for the format so what's outstanding is yes the most of the locking core stuff but that's pretty pretty self-contained so aside of peter hating it it should be not that contentious so the migrate disable stuff is 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 on the way I think, and then or the that's the big ports. I have a, a patch set uh, I'm polishing now for for the soft IRQ handling on RT, but that's not uh, not too bad. Oh, exciting Linux kernel features, hardware features, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of exciting hardware features or not so exciting hardware features on the horizon. People are trying to make, to make it work. So I don't see anything really outstanding. It's just building on, on top of what we have right now. So it's... I think yes, it's it's the accelerator stuff, it's the multi 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 device stuff which you can hand into containers and VMs and what whatever, but it's so it's not 
nothing revolutionary. I don't think there is anything which will just turn the kernel around uh, revolutionary in the near future. Maybe the Rust proposal was fun. It, may, it might make sense, at least on the driver side. Who will shape Linux in the in the future? Interesting question. I think there's still room for individuals. You just have to have the time to do so. So I consider myself as an individual uh, contributor. I mean, I'm backed by a company, but not by a big corporate like Google or Microsoft. So there is room, but but you have to have broad shoulders to to fight against those tech giants. But at the very end, I think even if a lot of the tech giants will uh, contribute most or a, or a, a big chunk of the of the kernel, then they still have to agree with, with each other. So, so the collaborative model and the consensus model will not go away. Ian is asking, how did it go with the RT priority inheritance project? What project are you talking about? Now it has I think you you are referring to the uh, to the, the rework where, where people are trying to do uh, to go away from priority inheritance and walk towards proxy execution in order to make deadline uh, work. So that's still that's still work in progress, mostly by the folks at Pisa University and some others. Uh, Michael, so there is no requirement that the uh, mainline drivers migrate to threaded IQs. So we've just full thread them. You can full thread them in mainline today. So they don't care mostly. So we just found a few uh, things in the networking code where people make assumptions that this can't happen, but it happens. So, but that's that's rather um, small and minor issues. So, and it's not a not an RT problem at all. So, once you you issue full thread uh, full threading on the kernel command line, you run into the same problems without RT. There's a question whether there's more, whether we see more usage of Linux in automotive industry with preempt RT merged in the mainline. I, I don't think it's really depending on it being being merged or not. It's going to be. They they are using it anyway. So, uh, and of course, it makes it easier for them if it's mainline and if it's. Uh, going the normal route instead of having an, an extra patch set and having an extra stable tree and things like that. So it makes stuff easier, but it, it's not going to be more more usage. I mean, they, there are tons of options. Not. Uh, so Thomas is asking what the issues with tasklets are. Tasklets are interesting. It's a so the it's mostly the implementation which sucks. So it's a it's a way to to do fewer arbitrary callbacks into soft RQ context, and it's semantically ill-defined. So 
interestingly, a lot of these uh, of the task let's use is sh shouldn't be there at all. So it's it's just uh, doing arbitrary stuff which could be done in a threaded interrupt handler as well. So, but it needs to be individually looked at per um, per use case, and it's not you cannot. Uh, do a wholesale uh, replacement. That's that. That will take quite some time. Um, yes, I think that Linux will can see disruption by smaller OSs from the bottom up, but this is not. Uh, not a surprise. L Linux has grown out of the, oh, we run on everything from the smallest microcontroller to to the largest server thing. So the uh, small, smaller OSs like Zephyr and others eat up from the bottom where Linux doesn't fit and can't fit anymore. So that's a good question. So yes, Linux per se is not a real-time operating system, but we have patches which, and, and they are gradually merged, which turn it into a real-time system. But it's it's hard to claim it's it's really in the in the tradition of. Um, real-time operating systems which were designed from ground up to to support the real time it's it's close but it's not mathematically provable so it's it's a best effort but with quite some success and it's the, the most scalable um, uh, real-time system on the planet, which runs on logs on launch machines. I haven't looked deeply into into EVL, so I can't even even tell what it what it what it actually does. So I have to to really um, defer that question to to a different point in time where I actually had time to look at it. No, I haven't written much Rust, but I like the concept of Rust. So it's, I mean, it, 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 Rust would help to avoid quite some of the problems C brings along, especially with people who are not aware of all the nasty shortcomings of C. So it's, it's mostly something to make it harder for driver writers to screw up. Ah, oh, SIMD in kernel space. <laughs> Interesting question. Without begin end, I don't know. It's hard to tell because the the main problem for that is that if you want to do that in all contexts, including interrupts or soft IRQs or whatever then you have to push <clears throat> to save and push uh, the 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 simd state or whatever xsafe state onto uh, the stack at every interrupt entry and that's going to be not cheap so that needs a lot more thought than just okay let 
TCC auto vectorized code. It's not that trivial because the, you carefully have to weigh the performance impact of saving uh, the register state on exception entry or interrupt entry versus what you gain in the code itself. And it's, I, I think that you have to, to try and figure out whether this actually works. I mean, technically it works, it's, it's not the problem, but um, you have to carefully weigh whether that's um, something uh, which actually brings a, a performance benefit versus the overhead of saving and restoring the register backs. Tricia, yes, my main project is to buy a goat farm. Unfortunately, I don't have to, enough time to follow through on that. There's way too much kernel stuff keeping me busy. So, but someday um, I might just throw the kernel stuff aside and go for the goat farm. Um, RT and KVM VMs. I think there's still uh, work being done in you know, Red Hat. I think this is a lot. Mm. Christian, no, I don't know about the page log fairness stuff. I haven't followed that. So, oh, DPDK. I mean, DPDK and raw sockets, you can't compare that. I think what you really want to look at is the question whether you can use XTP versus uh, DPTK, which is um, still leveraging the, the drivers in the kernel and uh, the whole uh, kernel facilities with all the, the good things, uh, but has avoids the, the, the overhead of, of crossing the syscall boundaries and things like that. So yeah, there's, there's an advantage in, in using DPTK, but the DPTK based on XDP is what I would suggest you look into, not at a DPTK uh, re-implementing a complete driver in user space. That's a total mess. So, Robert, Yes, worst case response time for a for a generic Linux kernel. Yes, it's five, maybe five hundred milliseconds, whatever. It, I don't have numbers, uh, recent numbers, but it used to be in that area. But with the preempt RT patches, is it's definitely not at five hundred milliseconds. It, if if it's if that happens, that's simply a bug. I mean, we can't prove it mathematically, but um, we would see it in the in the massive testing, which is 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 done out there. Um, the only way I can think about it is you use some uh, some uh, weird out of tree driver or something like that, or some really badly maintained driver but you should see the problem already in testing with the with the proper debug options so that would tell you that driver is doing something wrong so but in the general case yes i mean um it's hard to prove but i don't think so uh, able uh, T 
kernel, kernel tinification. Yes, that's that's an effort which is going on forever, but it's hard for them to catch up. Um, and I I can't tell what the minimal requirements for a platform is at right now. So I I lost track of of that, but it's definitely. Uh, not the 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 the, the tiny microcontroller uh, 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 microcontroller thing, which has a very very limited amount of RAM and things like that. So there there, there are invest, uh, investigations out there uh, from other people who say what the what the minimal requirement is, but I don't know. Uh, Drew, one microsecond on a modern Intel AMD server? You're kidding. One microsecond is is way less than the hardware-induced latencies can be. And that's something the kernel has no control over. So if you look at uh, things like... Um, DMA, uh, bus contention, or whatever. It's extremely hard to guarantee a one microsecond on on such a on such a machine because they are not built for that. To, as a worst case guarantee, that's just. I I think it's an illusion. But um, so if you really need need. To, to handle that, you, you should have something which is less complex. And there are a lot of approaches out there in industry where you just use things like um, uh, FPGAs or, or some uh, site controller, which does the real, real, real hard to hard to uh, achieve one microsecond thing and then you offload uh, this part of the real-time computation to that uh, accelerator or whatever you name it. I think that's more realistically than trying to say, oh yeah, we can do the one microsecond on a modern AMD server or Intel server. I think it doesn't make sense. So, Pankai, yes, it's hard for individual computer, uh, contributors to, to watch what in multiple subsystems is going on if you want to contribute something which overlaps these subsystems. So, it's hard even for, for single subsystems, depending on their activity level, it can be hard to follow. It's it, it heavily depends on how you organize yourself and how much time you can you can spend to actually uh, follow what's going on. It's there's no general rule for that. Um, versus the the patch series, which is thrown over the fence every six months and then people disappear. <sighs> yes, I mean, if there's really value in the patch set, I mean, if there's there's um, well, you, if there are fixes, you really should uh, pull them out and and just polish them up and and apply them. Um, if it's something which is uh, actually making it easier for um, um, for your subsystem to to be maintained or gives gives you a better code uh, structure or whatever, then 
it's worth as a maintainer to actually go there and 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 do the dirty laundry. So when we look at it, and there's again no general answer. It depends on the quality of the patches or on the quality of the approach. I mean, if the approach is good, why would you throw it away? 